Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. I'm Austin Titchener from the Reduced Shakespeare Company. And I'm Gary Andrews, otherwise known as Gary Scribbler from the internet. From the World Wide Web. And today, for this episode of Drawing on Shakespeare, we're, we're, we're talking to a woman. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that it's taken us this long to get her. She's so popular. She's so busy. And she is the embodiment of what this show is about. She draws and she is the artist and illustrator and designer and creator of pop-up Shakespeare. So she draws on Shakespeare, which I helped co-write, and she is the lovely and talented and incredibly busy and important Jenny Mazels. How are you? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's, um, that's, quite, that's quite an introduction. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yes, well, thank you. I'm excited, although nervous because I am really, really rubbish at things like Pictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's always like, Jenny, come on my team. And yes, then, people oh, always oh, say, yeah, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to play against you because you'll be brilliant. You go, no, because I try and draw oh, it no, properly. It's <laughs> awful. Um, it's like, what's that? It's like, it's a cat. Um, so I am quite nervous because normally I like to, you know, do loads of layer drawings and spend ages on things. So this is, this is quite exposing. It's a, quite how rubbish I am. But anyway, here I am being exposed. It's fine. Well, I'm the, I'm, it, it, I think my analog is that I'm a terrible improviser because I'm, I'm an okay actor and I can memorize lines, but I'm also a playwright. So I'm always in my head planning things instead yeah. of just kind of going with the flow, which you are supposed to do in improvisation. Um, yeah, I but think I'm this, like you. I need, I need reference and I like to plan things. So yeah, um, yeah, be, be warned. That's my caveat to what I'm about to, um, uh, yes. And it's quite, you know, it's quite contentious. Um, the whole copying and tracing thing, um, you know, not. I think a lot of a lot of true artists would would say, well, that's not really art. But oh. what I want to do is get the, get the people who love cooking and sewing and knitting drawing. Um, but classically, and, of course, painters <laughs> used to go and study other painters and copy their yeah. paintings to learn how to paint. And the greatest classical painters did that. So actually, it's yeah. a completely valid way of learning. I did when I was a child. I used to copy. Um, you know, Uderzo's Asterix drawings and Hergé's Tintin drawings and stuff yep. and Shepard's drawings of Winnie the Pooh and that's what I used to copy to learn how to draw when I was a child. And, and yeah. writers, writers do the exact same thing. You find a person who's, who's writing you like you, emulate that. I know when I'm working on a role, I sometimes go, geez, all right, well, how would Helen Mirren play it? If, if she were to do it, how because could they're I- they're so alike as well. <laughs> so I was, you know, when Helen Mirren, me, it's kind of this, you know, Occasionally really, never seen you in the same room. Never seen you in the yeah. same room. Yeah. Mm. Me? And Me? of course, Shakespeare. Shakespeare used to sort of copy other, well, he used yeah. to take other writer's stories and then make them vastly better. That's a whole different thing. Um, I, yeah, I'm a, I, I'm a great believer in everyone can draw, but in the same way that everyone can cook, it, you need a recipe and that and that's kind of what I try and do is to give people the recipe <laughs> awesome well and and and, I, and you you have beautifully laid out behind you so many of your works and I and I have a few in my library pop up London one of the books you're talking about the wonderful world book pop-up book that you did the amazing pop-up geography book and if I have I think I have pop-up New York around here somewhere but I couldn't find it um but you, everywhere here, it's fine. <laughs> it's beautiful. But you came, you reached out. The, the origin story of how we worked together on the pop up uh, Shakespeare is that you had the notion, oh, it's got to be, it's, I want to do a pop up book about Shakespeare. Nobody's ever done it. And I want these guys to write it. Is that, that's, that's sort of the short version. There's no way I could have written it. I didn't even think for spits. Second, my knowledge of Shakespeare is um, non-existent. I went to um, uh, lots of different schools and I was a bit of a daydreamer and I don't think I really listened in school. I was too busy like drawing. Um, and um, and I, I think my feeling was this, it's a shame, it's a shame. And I would really love children to have the knowledge that I didn't have. And when I had the idea, um, it was immediate, um, the, 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 the kind of need for you to be involved. Um, and uh, I, uh, I knew very, uh, I knew of the reduced Shakespeare company because it was my husband and our, our first date, which is, <laughs> which is um, really, really quite lovely. So um, I remember just laughing until I cried, and also learning a lot actually, and thinking this is a this is the most incredible production. It was it, it was um, 
uh, it's so clever like they're just a genius so um it, yeah it was immediate in my mind who should write the book and then i took to twitter didn't i to contact you <laughs> you did you reached out via twitter and within 10 minutes you had found me and we had responded well yeah what are we idiots of course we're gonna we would love to write a book with you um <laughs> Um, but, and today we're, we've talked in other episodes of Drawing on Shakespeare about his, 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 his stories, his characters, his plot lines, how they inform people. But today we're talking about sort of literally his words, right? We talked about his language, but we're, today we're literally talking about his words. Is that right? Yes. Well, I think that, um, people don't use, um, words enough as as decorative art i think it's one of the most tangible things that people can create um that is beautiful and looks really you know quite professional that you could put in a frame um whereas something like the 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 images that gary comes up with would take years and years of training or just to have a kind of gift of drawing um something like decorative lettering if you have a few tips um and what better than shakespeare's quotes and if people um, are inspired by Shakespeare, then wouldn't it be lovely if they could turn some of those quotes into works of art that they could then have in their house and be inspired by on a daily basis. So that's kind of the, I thought today it'd be quite nice to do something of, uh, around a quote um, and, and to give a few tips back so that people could do it themselves. I love it. A real, a real treat for me today because I, I could sit back and go, ah, <laughs> someone else do all the work, although I am going to do one at the same time. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm not doing the lettering. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be illustrating what the lettering is quoting. So we will have two artworks going on simultaneously here. That's great. Well, and I'll just be over here with the best seat in the house watching you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to keep a commentary going Austin you've got the job of actually talking while we both sit here with our tongue between our teeth <laughs> I know this is the worry is like drawing and talking yeah that, I'll probably go really wrong but yeah <laughs> uh, I'll just be uh, lovely bit of shading there oh well done <laughs> yes. it's just a commentary like proper commentary and she's gone over the lines she's yeah. got the blue she's got the blue the blue's coming <laughs> blue card <laughs> so would you like to tell the ladies and gentlemen what the quotation is that we are giving them today, JB? Um, okay, it, um, it is a really rather beautiful quote and it's from Richard II um, and it's quite timely. It is, in winter's tedious night, sit by the fire with good old folks and let them tell thee tales. So it's quite whimsical and lovely. It's a lovely image actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. What, what kind of folk? Um, it is with good old folks. Good that's old. me i'm Which good old. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, all, we're all we're all old so that's you. <laughs> <laughs> well I, um i love this notion about that uh, that that these could be work that the words themselves are works of art mm -hmm. it, it also makes me think it also makes me think Ooh, a line of shakespeare greeting cards oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure they exist i'm sure they i'm sure they exist but um yeah no i do a lot i mean also i think in terms of just sort of hand lettering, if you, if, if with a few tips, it's so nice to do because then, it, you know, you can personalize things and, you know, thank you cards become embellished and it, it's a really lovely thing to practice and, and I hope with the skill. Well, how does one, so I have zero visual art skills, N none. Uh, and so I, I, I have no idea how one would even begin to do something like that. Okay, so with all lettering, I think the thing that you want, first of all, is something to kind of house it in. So um, a sort of shape or depending on, if you have a kind of, if you were to a card, then the card would be the shape. But you want something to kind of house that um, lettering in. And then um, my, my tip would be, that it's kind of like your best handwriting. So, you know, when you have like your absolutely best italic handwriting. Um, so what you want to do is you are going to, and I always do it in a kind of really pale pencil first, because there's something quite scary about committing. Um, it's funny because I do exactly the same with my drawings. I'm starting <laughs> off with a pale blue and then, and then oh, I look, it up in pale nails. blue, yeah, perfect. Blue. <laughs> And, and also it just takes the stress away of like, oh, I've gone wrong. And then it doesn't, you know, it's not as fun, is it? Um, yeah, so I would say that really what you're doing is you are, um, you're creating your sort of finest italic handwriting. And then you go back 
to that handwriting and um, and you add um, another line to it, which would be the kind of what I call the down line. So the down line um, would be thicker. So you're, what you would do is you would map it all out. So at the moment, I am um, writing it out in my best writing. Uh, and then I'm going to go over that in paint. So um, I don't know if that's a similar thing to how you work, um, Gary, in terms of kind of going over things. Yeah, I mean, because I'm drawing digitally for a lot of the stuff, I, I work in, in, a, in a layer palette at the side. And so I'm drawing a bottom layer in the pale and then I start a new layer and work over that and eventually delete the bottom layer, which is equivalent to rubbing it out, I guess. Or sometimes I put the bottom layer, knock it back a little bit, but keep it that's slightly there. So there's a bit of the working underneath. And it, so it's the same, it's the same principle, really. It's, that, it's working from faint to darker if you like yeah and, and adding detail with, e with each successive pass that's really interesting because i didn't realize that you did work digitally because obviously in your well sketch my, my doodle day the doodle day that people sort of know me from that happens in a book that is that is yeah. analog but my my sort of all your work was like that but actually it isn't you've got no your my professional yeah. sort of illustration work is 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 digital mainly for practical reasons frankly um occasionally a job might come up where I will go analog and it's quite lovely when you do but um just for just for purely practical and certainly for the drawing on Shakespeare it, it, it helps that I draw this way because I can record the screen yeah, um, of course, well. yeah. But, um, yeah do you work digitally ever Jenny never <laughs> I'm a Luddite <laughs> um the only time I work digitally is I'm I'm, I'm sometimes asked to to um supply artwork in layers and in that case, I'll scan in all my drawings and then I'll layer them. But it, the, I never, ever, ever work um, in artwork digitally. Um, yeah, no, I just, I, I, it's not, not because I'm some kind of principled Edwardian. It's just because I'm not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but for, if, so for instance, in this, in this great um, spread from Pop-Up Shakes, the tree of Midsummer and the ship and of Twelfth Night and the, you know the rope of this frame and um i can't grab it <laughs> i can't grab it um you know, so all of these things were done hand drawn yeah. and then scanned and then put and together in and then put together well there we were lucky we had an amazing um uh art editor didn't we at walker books um yeah. and they were they really like everything in layers because they like to, they like to have more control it depends on the publishers i think some publishers like to really control and actually walker books are really good at the control because they create beautiful books and um, which, yeah. which is great so in that sense there's a lot of move and i guess it, it means that they can make changes you know because it's like oh i just right they can move, move here things around. It's here. yeah it's not so set in stone yeah yeah well and and while you guys are both working um i just wanted to give an example of you know my best italian handwriting um that, <laughs> Yeah. That is not it, italic, it, italic. Oh, italic. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, I can fix that. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, see, there's italic. I just wrote it and underlined it. Would you like? <laughs> um, that's no problem. But I've been, I, I, I wanted to learn this. This is a story I'll tell while you guys are drawing. Oh, now I'm talking with an English accent, putting an R in the middle of drawing. Um, uh, uh, I wanted to, um, I wanted to write in cursive, learn proper cursive handwriting um, in the second grade. And I was told, oh, I'm not allowed to do that. You don't learn that until the third grade. So, oh, so I don't, I'm not familiar with the grades. So how old were you? How old were you in that? So I would seven, you know, seven, six or seven, okay. you know, seven or eight going into third grade. And then, and then uh, uh, maybe, well, maybe eight or nine. I kind of, Really That's remember. a shame because the French children are taught the most beautiful handwriting, aren't they? French children always have exquisite handwriting, and it's such well, a shame because we don't. We're the same in England. We're not really taught beautiful handwriting. Well, and and the the, the frustrating thing for me me was that even then I went yes, but I'm ready to learn now. Yeah. And and the fact that that wasn't sort of honored, you know, I so consequently I I have printed since the second grade block letters, and my handwriting has never gotten any better because oh, I just really? went, nah, screw it, no, I'm done, <laughs> forget it. Yeah. <laughs> That's also yeah. part of my own stubbornness, but still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a shame, and do you know it's so interesting because when every time I have um, people come to my sort of classes, 
and they and it's it's so sad because it's so often um a tale about a teacher who who said that they can't draw and it's put them literally put them off for life it's really sad you just think oh, you know all all these years and they've just thought well i can't draw because my art teacher said i was rubbish and then they sit down and you and you give them a few of the you know secret methods and ingredients a bit of copying and tracing and and, and they can and they and they can draw and, it, and, and it, it's a sort of empowering moment for them but it's really sad wonder, that, that one know, person has made them believe that for so you long. think shakespeare had a teacher in school saying oh shakespeare your writing's terrible honestly <laughs> go away and copy go away and copy some <laughs> some roman stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you'll never you'll never amount to anything because you'll never go to Oxford or Cambridge. So just stop yeah. now. Yeah, just exactly. give up. Give up. Yeah. yeah. Well, and 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 Jenny, and at some point we should talk up for sure. Talk about the fact that it's such a part of what you do these days is your own classes, your own your sketch club classes oh, yeah. that are both that were in person and are, and are now yeah. online. Well, they were online but now they're just all, all online but I, I, I offered them and I, well, I'm still offering them for free to um, to people in lockdown who just 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 need them for whatever yeah. reason I mean someone might just think do you know I could really do with some, someone just giving me something nice that's fine or you've been hit financially so that offer still stands um, and in the first lockdown I sent um, I think I sent 2,000 emails out of people saying yes please um, okay. which is really which is really lovely and uh, a nice that get, it give, it's giving people, continuing to give people just some distraction from the stress of, um, of, the, of the virus and the, and the fear that um, everyone's feeling. And, um, uh, and also nice to do collectively. I had quite a few messages of people doing it with family or friends because it's, it's all online and they were all doing it together like we are now, like we're drawing right. together. And that was really lovely. So, um, yeah, the online has really taken off. Um, but not making money for it, giving it away for free. But never mind. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Fortunately, we only have do literally dozens of viewers for these things, so nobody. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, well, if, but all that's been one of the <laughs> if all four viewers could subscribe. I will say that we've, we will come out of this lockdown, and one of my achievements will be uh, 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 this Drawing on Shakespeare series. Um, yeah. and, and, and really, all I've done is show up for the recordings. Gary does all the editing and the drawing, so I don't do much of anything. But it's been a, such a glorious way to chat with folks about, about Shakespeare in our work and in our lives. Um, Gary, I love what you're... See, I can't see... I can't do the actual play-by-play -play commentary of what Jenny's oh, drawing because yeah. I can't see what she's drawing. But I can see yours, Gary. And it's marvelous work there from the man in the studio. Well done. <laughs> oh, there we oh. go. Oh, in winter's tedious night. Oh, that's so lovely. And that's just you starting... Do but that's you freehanding, right? Well, I did it first. a little light. You can see the, the very, very faint light blue. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, so, just so that I had like a little bit of confidence that I was, you know, a like spelling it right because I can't spell. Um, so <laughs> um, it's very relaxing. It's really relaxing painting lettering um, because you don't have to worry so much. It's not like oh, you know, when sometimes if you think oh, I'm just going to draw a horse and then you paint it, and you think oh no, it's you know, it it, it, look, it looks really like a llama. <laughs> <laughs> But your lettering, your lettering is magnificent, and I, and if 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 our viewers of this um, episode are are not following Jenny on the Twitter or the Instagram, um, she shares glorious artwork, and in and including just recently your um what is it your vacation journals, your holiday journals? Oh yeah, I've always kept those um uh, holiday diaries. Yeah, I've kept them all my life. I have um. I have uh, a whole pile of them, and they're really nice to to look through. Um, they're, I think, yeah, they're a bit um, of a labour of love. Like they take over holidays, but I do really love doing them. And that was the first holiday I've had in two and a half years. So because we built the house, and then obviously lockdown, so right. I was hungry to do another one. But yeah, they're really nice to do. And then all, yeah, it's all the lettering is is a, is a lovely, relaxing thing to do on holiday. I mean, but you may, you use, uh, I think you record some time-lapse videos and you make it just look like effortless, the, the way you cal calligraphy the all your writing. <clears throat> and in addition to being fantastic records of your holiday, they are just, they look, I've never seen one in person, but they look like such handsome, beautiful objects. 
Let's I get one. Oh, lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's only half of them, but yeah, they they um they're just um yeah, just full of lettering and paintings and vacation kind of notes and um bits of packaging. Um yeah. <laughs> the skiing. Um so they yeah, I think it's also because I'm not I'm not very good at just um sitting on um holiday and just sort of you know sunbathing and things. So <laughs> they, they keep me they keep me busy whilst everyone else is sort of sunbathing. But yeah. And I want to ask you this too, Jenny, but you know, stop me if I've interrupting your drawing and your work, because I know you you're 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 you are you have set yourself a task here. You um um uh, you somehow managed to find wherever you are all the colors of the rainbow, and I don't know whether that's conscious or you've you've pre-planned it so obsessively that there's going to be rainbow colors everywhere, or if you're just the person who, no matter where you are, you see color, you see the rainbow wherever you are, uh, and and I guess I'm I'm jealous of whichever kind of person you are that man manages to do that. I mean, well, um, it's embarrassing. It's funny now because rainbows have become like a zeitgeist. Like everyone loves rainbows now. But I um, have had like a weird obsession with rainbows. Um, and I had this outfit in the in the eighties where I had I oh, was awful. It was like a basically like a rainbow shell suit. Nice. <laughs> like a really horrible nylon jacket and then I was so excited because I found a pair of horrible nylon rainbow trousers not matching which is maybe worse I don't know and I remember my grandparents lived in North Wales and I was walking around Carnarvon Castle um, and um, a whole group of school children well not children more than my age I'm probably about like 16 just all burst out laughing and said what on earth does she look like <laughs> and, I, and it was only until like years later that I realized they were probably not being kind but I thought they were just really jealous of my rainbow outfit <laughs> obviously, obviously clearly clearly um but yeah I've always been I mean you probably see behind me my little rainbow collection um I've just always loved them I think and I thought a lot about it actually and I think I think it's the sequential order of the colours. I, I think it's I think it's very pleasing. It's not just the colour, it's the fact that they and it has to be the right colours, because obviously there are some really nasty rainbows <laughs> that are really, you know, vibrant colours, but the more subtle the colour. And it's to do with that pleasing sequential order. It's like a real harmony in the world. Um, and they are, I mean, they are quite special. If you see an amazing rainbow in the sky it's something it's a special moment so they're just a symbol of just joy and happiness and and actually i'm really delighted they're like everywhere now i remember going to san francisco and thinking this is the best place ever there's just rainbows everywhere <laughs> and, now, and now the whole world has become rainbows everywhere so. <laughs> you're talking about my my hometown the place of my birth san francisco a wonderful place, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could afford to live there. Now, Gary, you've given a, you've given your drawing a, a great wash now. Yeah, I've decided to go a bit of colour this time. So um, they're going to be <laughs> sat round a, a fire, and they're going to be underlit by the by the by the firelight. So oh. I thought, as we're doing just basically one drawing today each, I'd, I'd spend a bit more time and just sort of play with it and uh, lovely see what's what so I'm, I'm kind of making it up as I go along I, there was not much of a plan when I started I, I, I literally do that where I just sort of dive in and hope for the best and see, see where it takes me and is is what you're doing where you've put in you've put in darkness and you erase it to reveal the light is I'm that gonna, sort of I'm going to work in layers again so there's going to be layers of deeper dark on top and then another layer with a sort of more opaque light that will that will be like light falls onto a surface and illuminates it so working with this kind of medium you can do that if you're working watercolor you'd leave the paper white you'd leave the highlight areas and you you got you you leave the light and work darker 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 with right. this sort of stuff I tend to start with a mid-tone mm. and then I push the shadows in then bring the highlights up in separate layers yeah so you're thinking in two directions at once in terms of the image yeah um, so I love I love talking about the process of this and it's such a joy to talk to people who not only are good at what they do but are able to talk so intelligently about what they do it's so helpful and revealing it's, it's kind of a nice chat because when you you're working for yourself 
or for you know doing commissions or whatever it's quite a solitary business usually i mean i know jenny teaches and stuff but generally certainly for me it's quite a a, a solitary business so having to actually sort of stop and think about when someone says how do you how or why do you do that and it's kind of like oh how how or why do I do that? Um, and then having to justify why, what I'm doing and why. I mean, quite often the answer is, well, I don't know, I'll just do it. Um, but but um, then you have to sort of think, no, actually, I better give them a proper answer. So you, you kind of, it makes you analyse, you know, hopefully not too much. I don't want to lose the, the magic, as it were, but it's I nice. To sort of... My students as well, um, uh, the, the students that I teach on the, on the illustration degree, not the, the kind of sketchbook club students, and I think there's like two types of students. And I think I was the type of student that um, I was never any good at the, the journey. So uh, as you'd have a brief and then you would be expected to kind of research and experiment and then re reach a final piece after a long journey. Oh. Whereas the minute I got that brief, I would have an image in my head very yep. clear of what I wanted to do. And the journey was useless to me. And so I would, I would naughtily, I would have to, I couldn't, I couldn't like rest until I had created that image. And then I would retrospectively create a journey just so I would get the grades. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that, I recognize that in my students. And it's, it's hard because I want to say to them, just do it, just do it retrospectively to get the grades. But I can't. I totally that. relate. I think that's why we get on journey because I was exactly when I was doing my degree. I remember, you know, you'd get you'd get the brief and you've got a week to do this picture and I'd do it in yeah. like the first day. And then, spend, yeah. and then spend the rest of the week going, right, I better produce the um the re the, the background drawings, yeah, the bits that got me here. <laughs> so I'd be doing them afterwards. <laughs> I guess it's it's with, with fine art you can sort of imagine yeah, sometimes yeah. there's there's a there's a the, the luxury of the journey is part of the thing. Whereas certainly if you're working commercially you don't have the luxury of that time to no. faff about. It's no. like you've got this commission and you go, oh, when do you want it? And they go, yesterday. And you yeah. go, right, okay, I'm pulling an all-nighter and I've got to produce this piece of considered work. And it's a, it's almost a discipline that should be taught sometimes if you're going to work I, commercially. I agree, yeah. And I, I, and I do have to bite my, my, um, my tongue, actually, because, you know, I don't want to get into trouble. But... Um, in, in terms of when I'm teaching at the, at the uni, but I do, I do think, what are you, te what, how are you teaching them what it's like to be an illustrator? Because I have to do things at breakneck speed and the turnaround is really fast. And actually all that journey work has often been done by the client anyway. Like they might, you know, they've really researched it and they really clearly know what they want you to do. So yeah. I mean, I know, I've never understood that as well, which is like you pay somebody for their talent and for their years of expertise, and that, but you try to penalize them by saying, oh, but it's only going to take you 30 minutes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but you're not paying for the time it takes me to do it. You're paying for all the years that have got me to the fact that I can do it for you yesterday. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, it takes so long, but yeah. <laughs> turning it around as, uh, as well. So, do you, do you, um, obviously obviously you know you write plays for yourself for your, but also you work on commission with writing as well i know you produce a weekly essay for folger and stuff like that and stuff do you have a similar situation where you you, you know you go geez i've got to hit the ground running on this one um I, yeah i do i mean i've uh, it's funny how maybe this is true for you guys as well uh the, the fact you know the fact that you that i have all these years of experience writing plays and articles um helps in the sense that I don't panic when I start to write the new thing. But the new thing is always its own thing. <laughs> so with its own requirements and rules, and, and you have to learn what the requirements and rules of the new thing is in order to do that new thing. So yeah. in a way, it's the same as everything I've ever, always ever done. But in, in a lot of important ways, it's, it's a brand new beast and so what i have what i've learned over the years is is my own sense of calm and confidence knowing that i can <laughs> i can figure out what a thing is and and therefore know how to approach it yeah um in the in the case of uh it, it, like for instance in any of our it, my scripts reduced for reduced shakespeare company or for whatever uh, or even when i'm directing honestly i'm not worried about making it funny 
Um, you know, I know we can find laughs. I know it'll be funny. I'm z zero not worried about that. And like when I directed Twelfth Night in Cincinnati, uh, and when I see productions of Reduce Shakespeare Company shows done by amateurs or, or folks with less experience, there's you can sometimes see a desperation on the part of the performers or the actors to, oh my God, we've got to make this funny. So mm -hmm. immediately the audience is put off because the audience is seeing the panic in the eyes of the actors. Yeah. And you don't yeah. want that. You want, you, want you want to see characters on stage who are committed to their, to their issue and to the, to the struggles they're having as characters within the confines of the story, not the panic on the eyes of the actors going, is this funny, is this funny, is it funny? And do you think um, that comes with just experience, that, um, that, that comfort that it'll be, it'll be entertaining? Because I mean, I would never, I would, I would be that amateur just desperately hoping at least for a smile, but that, that's, an, that's, an incre that's an incredible skill to have to have that sort of comfort and know that it's going to be funny. It's well, you're trust, yeah, you're, you, you, it's years of trusting in your own abilities, but it's also yeah. trusting that the audience wants to be taken away in a story. And I think that's true of whatever it is, where they're looking at a piece of art or they're, they're, they're following, reading a novel or watching a play, they're, they're involved with the thing that's happening and they want to see the thing happening. They don't want to see the work that goes into the thing happening, or at least I yeah, don't. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I know that... I guess as well, I mean, you know, thinking about um, the, the sort of the reason we're here, you know, Shakespeare was a, was a working playwright. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have all this analysis that people go into these days, this textual analysis and the deep in the themes and the stuff. He was having to bang this stuff out. I mean, you know, we need a new play, Will, you know, boom, 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 mm -hmm. crack it out. And I mean, I can't believe for a minute that he was sitting there deeply working out all that the stuff that I think that just came naturally with him um, I agree. Yeah. I agree. and he must have going through that exact same thing as us I'm like oh I've got a deadline they're gonna want they're, we need this show for next Saturday and I haven't done act five yet you know there must have been that I know he cranked them out two or three or sometimes four a year and uh, and it's because he had a he had a skill set. Oh, you know what? I'll I'll take this history from Hollandshed and I'll change what I need, or I'll take this old t fable of Lear and I'll change it up. And and uh, yeah. and I'll and I and I have a bunch of actors who I know can do this and this and this and this. Yeah, and yeah. So I'll, I'll give them things to do too. Um, I know that uh, you know we just posted uh, 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 Gary as we record this. We we just recently posted last weekend our conversation with Peter Holland from yeah. the. University of Notre Dame and the head of the International Shakespeare Association. And, and he talked about writing program notes of, you know, banging out a thousand words about Hamlet in a way that will sound not too ludicrous for people who know what they're talking about, but also not too boring for people, punters who are just coming in to read the article. I feel, I do feel that challenge in my monthly essay for the Folger Shakespeare Library, because, you know, as a, as a Shakespearean academic, I am a reduced one at best. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm coming very much from, again, honoring the truth of the moment. I'm writing very much from my perspective as a practic practitioner, you know, um, um, and, and hopefully writing in such a way that I'm adding something to the conversation and not just rehashing um, uh, uh, points that have been made by other <laughs> far yeah. more learned and more well-read Shakespeareans than I. It's interesting, isn't it? Okay. And there's been something, I don't know, I don't know what it is, it's probably the combination of our voices or the, or the beauty of, of your drawing or, or the fact that my wife Dee is not here, but I've been joined by our kitten Ripley here on the <laughs> on the staircase oh. who's enjoying the conversation and mostly i think yelling at me too hey you were gonna let me out today you? <laughs> when you say kitten proper little uh no she's a year old now so she's she's properly young but not quite so little anymore but she's na we named her ripley at because she likes to fight aliens fantastic of course that makes sense perfect sense um I love the ghostly glows of the firelight or the flashlight, whatever. Yeah, yeah it'll be the flames. Eventually, there'll be some flames going in on the uh, for the mm. campfire, um, mm. and uh, uh, that will give us the uh, the, the fire. That will go in last of all, probably. I'm, I'm getting the other bits in first, and then uh, the fire will go in after that. So it's it's funny. We're you know we're, again we're chatting about you know Shakespeare the man we're talking about here, and you know we both us and I come from a certain sort of you know 
background where it's a big thing for us. And you, you you're a self-confessed um, non sort of a Shakespeare academic, Jenny, as well. It's interesting that you that you that you uh, that you um, show that you wanted to do a Shakespeare um, pop up book, though. You know that. Also, as well, I, I mean, I kind of knew Midsummer Night's Dream like really well, and um, we did a bit of Coriolanus. And I think my feeling was um, every school has the Midsummer Night's Dream production, and what was needed actually was everything, was mm. a, a, an introduction to everything, like yeah. literally everything. Um, and if children had that, then um, if something Caught their, caught their imagination later in life they might go and see a slightly more obscure play because they I remember that in that book when I was a kid and I was always really fascinated by that element or this element or that character um so that's what I thought was really really important just not just midsummer yeah <laughs> the 10 year olds because that I, I mean I mean I mean I must have been to a million productions and I you know played every character and that that's not the only play and i and i think yeah. having that introduction to everything was really important i think and i well, know and I, and I think we had we had the same desire jenny you me and reed martin my partner and co-writer you know we wanted to create the book we wished we had had as kids yeah exactly yeah you know yeah yeah and it is a gorgeous, it is a, a, a gorgeous book. I mean, and at this point, dear viewers, I am going to cut in some sort of nice close-up shots of the book itself. Look at these. Ooh. Ooh, ah. Uh, ooh, ah. Uh. Well, and, and, and I'm finding, you know, getting back to the, um, how do you articulate your own process? I found over the years, certainly in the last five years, that I've, bec I've, I've double, triple, fourpled down on the Shakespeare aspect of it you know i was um uh, I, we, we, I lived in los angeles for a very long time and i did a lot of tv work um but it be, the business changed and i got older or whatever and i was getting less tv work but even even during all of that i was still do i was still creating new shows for the reduced shakespeare company and it suddenly became clear oh wait maybe this is what i need to focus on right <laughs> is just my work for the reduced shakespeare company and so it was it, 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 and so that that encouraged me, it maybe forced me to focus even more on not just reduced Shakespeare, but Shakespeare, Shakespeare, actual, actual. Yeah, yeah. Shakespeare. Yeah. So it's been. I find that you know, even in my, even in my free time, I'm reading novels based on Shakespeare. I'm having conversations about. Shakespeare adaptations. I'm in a Shakespeare book club. I'm writing these essays. I mean, it's just I've it's 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 become so clear to me that this is a this is a pool into which I will continue to keep diving because I'll never get to the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and you're and the quote that you're working on, Jenny, reminds me of one of my favorite quotes from Shakespeare. And again, we're coming up to that time of the year. It's one of the very, it's one of the very last lines from um, The Merry Wives of Windsor, where Mrs. Page says, heaven give you many, many, many uh, merry days. Um, <laughs> good husband, let us everyone go home and laugh this sport or by a country fire. And that just seems like a, a wonderful, which is sort of what you're drawing. Yeah, yeah. I think somebody heard you. Look, I've got a visitor now. Uh, <laughs> I have to move it before she'll walk on my work. So. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, my, my cat can't get in here unless I let him in because the door's shut. So I, I feel left out now. I haven't got my cat in here with me. <laughs> Jenny, this is a question. So you've always been visually gifted, oriented, I guess, in terms of your drawing. Um, but you're right now you're literally drawing lang letters and words. Um, did you were you a big reader as well? Was language a thing for you, or were you visually massive, driven? Massive, massive reader. As a, well, I was brought up um, my sort of early childhood without a TV, um, and so my parents are artists. And oh, I just I I hate I hate the fact that iPhones have taken over <laughs> over the world. I think it's incredibly sad. Actually, I feel really really sad about it. 
um, because we, you know, we had really traditional time where I would draw and read. And uh, my grandmother was um, quite an influence as well. She she was a um, a, a real literary, and she was a, she was a feminist and a pianist and a poet. And um, she would she would give me the whole of Arago Press to just you know read all of that and, and wow. feminist press. Um, and so as a young child, I was a really, really big, big reader. Um, and um, my youngest daughter was the same as a child, but then the bloody iPhone took over. <laughs> well, I hope they have access to YouTube for the wonderful Drawing on Shakespeare um, series. <laughs> oh, yes, that's, that's obviously, that's fine, of course. They can watch that for as much as they want. <laughs> I, uh, I the, the the thing I love most about my phone is the fact that I can put books on it. So when no matter where I am, I have uh, I have a book going yeah, in yeah. one of my book reading apps. Like if I'm backstage during a performance of a play and I've got some time off stage, which is rare. I'm usually I'm rarely in plays where I'm off stage a lot. Um, it's great to have access to that. If you're if you're reading a book, being an actor, you 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 kind of absorb the character a bit. Does it come out in your work? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Um, uh, no, it doesn't because I'm not that good of an actor. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I, I. It's very interesting, actually. I guess that's the difference between yourself, who who you know, that, that is your full time, as it were, sort of job, and myself. If I'm doing a show, I I I, I really can't read another book it's one of the things when I'm learning a part my reading goes out the window because I think I, I should be learning the lines I should be looking at them I should be consolidating and I never totally feel I'm completely solid enough to read something else until that show's over <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. well that's a very interesting example because when we are writing a new reduced Shakespeare company show and we're when we're very close to being start rehearsing it you know I will be on stage and my mind will be elsewhere thinking about the new show okay. and I'll sometimes be with one of the other actors in the show who's not helping to write the new show and he'll just look at me and we'll get off stage he'll go you were thinking about the new show weren't you because you weren't there I could tell you had left you had left the stage and it's true and, and, and it's it, and I get into like we'll be writing the new show and I'll be saying a line in the existing show and I'll go oh I bet if we took the line that it's literally coming out of my mouth right now and spun it in such a way I could use it in a new way. Oh, I'm sorry. Where were we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have that, that had that moment occasionally on stage when you're doing a you're doing a speech. It's coming out of your mouth, but the other part of my head is saying. So when I go to the shop store, I need to pick up some onions, some potatoes. So and and you suddenly get to, you say, oh my god, ah, back into back in the room, back in the room, because your brain is doing two things at once. I, know. I think I would just be so bad at memorizing the lines. I don't know how you. I don't know how you both do it. Is it fear <laughs> is my secret usually. <laughs> fear of being, making an ass of yourself when you don't know them. That's that's the secret. Yeah, it's the carrot and the stick. Fear is the stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the applause is the carrot. <laughs> yeah, applause is the carrot. I wish I wish there were some magical secret to it, but it's really repetition, repetition, repetition. Yeah. I just have a really bad memory. I think. I think I just would be really. I'd just be really bad. Even You'd be if surprised, I, though. I think the thing is, and it's like anything. The more you do it, the easier it gets. I know if I've had a bit of a break. I mean, like this last year. You know, having not been able to do anything, the first time I go back into a show is going to be terrifying because it's going to be like, oh, it's like not running for a few weeks, then going out for a run. Everything hurts. It's kind of like that with your brain. When you <laughs> I've never had that fear, though, until just recently, like a couple of weeks ago, we were watching a version of King Lear and I was going, God, this speech is massive. Imagining learning that thing. And I go, wait a second. I'm, I, I know how to do that thing. I, I, I'm forgetting how to do that thing. Because this is the thing, isn't it? We all forget as well, because you look at these people and go, that's huge. But you do three handers. You do a whole, a whole night of a show. There's just three of you. That's a lot of words. And they're fast. They're fast shows. So there's a lot of words. Uh, yeah, I'm not a, uh, yes, you're 100% right. And I, and I see friends of mine particularly ones who are older than me, who are saying, God, you're old, and look how fast you're moving. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I'm slowing down, but they're going, nope, I don't see it. It's yeah, like, yeah. That's the fast that you've always been. Yeah, I bet <laughs> you have one of those like, step counters. You'll, you, you'll be like smashing it because you're just running around the stage, and yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Hamlet in a Fitbit, yeah.
Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. No. I believe I got this watch last Christmas, but I've only done two shows since. Actually, yeah. literally two performances in 2020 before it all shut down. Yeah. So I didn't. Ha I haven't had a chance to actually turn the step counter on and see how much I do. Yeah, yeah. That would be fascinating, actually, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. <laughs> um, oh, yes, you want me to hold it up. What I'm going to do, and I'm doing a sort of um, wintery border. What I love about this is that I'm not fastidious about much in my life, but when I'm writing something, I, I do become fastidious about... Mm word usage and punctuation and are we are we saying what we really mean to say here you know i i'm i don't care about food i don't care about travel i don't uh, i don't care about cleanliness you know or keeping the house clean I, but i do care about the thing i care about which is my art and so I, it, it makes sense that you're you're being so fastidious with your drawing yeah, well, both of you I think that's the word that all of us, I can see that Gary's, I, I think you're definitely like that as well, aren't you, Gary? You're yeah, yeah. Your work. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that we all are. And actually, it's interesting, even um, watching a friend who's a fine artist paint once, and she does really um, quite sort of brutal big canvases with, you know, huge swathes of paint. And watching her being as fastidious <laughs> and... And as um, uh, a, a kind of acutely aware of what she was aiming for, and it didn't make any difference, I don't think, what kind of art you create. If it's your own personal creation, you you are going to be totally dedicated, aren't you, to yeah. that piece yeah. of work, whatever it is. Um, I so. Yeah, that's I, I, I think that's interesting about your writing as well. That that it's all you care about when you're when you're when you're writing. Mm. Thank you for coming on here and being so fastidious with us. It's been nice to see you both. Thank you for having me.